In the last video, we went over the basics of promises and looked at the improvements promises offer over callbacks. One of the important things we learned is that we should always return or throw in our then functions. We returned a simple string before, but we can actually return new promises to really elegantly handle multiple asynchronous operations in our promise chain. Let's take a look at that in action. We're working with the GitHub APIs, which are well documented and generally pretty easy to work with. We need to make an API call, then using the response, pull out some data for another API call. Since we're working with real APIs, we'll use an actual HTTP request instead of a simulated set timeout. Let's take a quick look at our new HTTP method. We're pulling in the popular request package for Node. We still take in a URL and a method, but we need to make sure the method is lowercase. This is because the methods on request are lowercase, and here on line 14, we're calling the request method. It would be like having request.get here, except we allow for more methods. Now, there are some flaws with this code and it doesn't fully support all methods, but we're focusing on promises, so we'll ignore those details for now. We return a new promise, and inside we make our request. The request has a callback with an error and a body. So if there's an error, we reject the promise with the error. If it has a body, we resolve the promise with the body. We also parse the body because it will come back stringified. Now let's use it and see how to execute multiple asynchronous calls using one promise chain. So we have our basic call to get a list of GitHub users. In our then, we're expecting users as the data, so we've called the parameter users. Let's console log it to see what it is. We see that it's an array of objects. In fact, the first user in the array is my user. I intentionally specified the number in the URL so that my user would be the first in the list. So that's where this crazy number comes from. In the response, we can see a lot of URLs for other GitHub APIs related to this user. We could get a user and then make another call to get the user's list of repos by using repos URL here. Let's do that. So for clarity, we'll pull out the first user and save it into a variable called user. Then we'll return a new call to HTTP, passing in user.reposURL. We know that our HTTP function will return a new promise, so this is returning a new promise from within the then of our first promise. We'll add another then function and console log the result of our call to the repos URL. We'll change this console log to say fetching repos so we can see when the request starts. We'll also add a console log for fetching users before our first HTTP call. And then we'll run the code. So we see fetching users, fetching repos, then the repos response. So we made a call to users, and when it resolves, it gets into our first then function. Then we grabbed a URL we needed made another call. When that resolves, we get into the next then, where we console log the data. Each call to HTTP returns a new promise, and since we've returned the new promise in our then function, we don't need any nesting. Everything stays flat. Plus, we can use a single catch to handle errors for both promises. So let's add a catch since that's a best practice when working with promises. Now there is an incredible amount of flexibility here. Our nested promise could have its own then and catch, and even multiple of each. We could put a catch here as well if we wanted to handle errors from these first two calls separately from the rest. In another video, we'll look in detail at the implications and execution order of more complicated promise chains. But just for fun, let's add one more nested HTTP call. We'll grab the first repo and make a call to get the languages used in that repo with the language URL field. Again, we'll add a message so we see when we start fetching the data. We'll add one more then and console log the data.
Now let's run it. So let's recap. When we return a new promise from within our then, it becomes part of our promise chain. Our next then has access to the return value of the promise. It can use the same catch or have its own. But we remove the need for nested pyramid code and can keep everything flat. In this case, we needed to wait for the first promise to resolve before making our second call because we grab specific data to use for the subsequent call. But what if we have multiple calls that don't rely on each other? For performance reasons, we want to send the requests all at once instead of one at a time. In the next video, we'll look at a promise method for working with multiple promises that are executed simultaneously.